Reaction number one is the addition of HX to an alkene. This is the reaction between HBr and 2-methylpropene to form 2-bromo-2-methylpropane. If you remember, Markovnikov's rule says that carbons with more hydrogens will get more hydrogens, while carbons with more substituents will get more substituents. This is why the hydrogen adds at carbon 1 and why the bromide anion adds at carbon 2. All right. Now that the addition of HX to an alkene is fresh in our memories, let's move on to reaction number two, a hydration re The second reaction number two, the hydration reaction. Let's look at a generalized example of a hydration reaction. The alkene 2-methylpropene reacts with water in the presence of an acid catalyst, HA, yielding an alcohol. We've got this alkene, 2-methylpropene. We've got an acid catalyst and we've got water. The acid catalyst is represented by HA. H, of course, is hydrogen, and A can be almost anything. Most of the time, the acid catalyst used will be sulfuric acid, H2SO4, or phosphoric acid, H3PO4. However, the catalyst is never acid jazz. When the proton attaches to carbon-1, we say the alkene has been protonated, forming a carbocation, just like we saw happen in the reaction with hydrogen bromide. So, since carbon-1 was protonated, carbon-2 is now a carbocation. The carbocation now needs electrons, and wouldn't you know it, there's lots of water around to provide them. So, water moves in. Its oxygen acts as a nucleophile and bonds to carbon-2. The oxygen now has a positive charge, so one of the hydrogens from the water molecule bails, leaving its electrons and a neutral product behind. Bye! Uh... Bye! Anytime you add water to an alkene in the presence of an acid catalyst, HA, you'll get a product with an H and an OH group added to the double bond, following Markovnikov's rule. This addition reaction. Electrophilic addition reaction number three is called a halogen addition reaction. Halogen addition reactions involve the addition of a halogen molecule to an alkene in a non-reactive solvent. Okay, there were a lot of new words there. First, we know halogens. They're found in column 7A of the periodic table, and they include fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. Second, a solvent is the medium that a reaction takes place in. A non-reactive solvent, then, is one which doesn't get involved with the reaction. Non-reactive solvents include dichloromethane, CH2Cl2, and carbon tetrachloride, CCL4. Remember, Remember, alkenes have electrons tied up in pi bonds, and that makes them very reactive. So let's say the Br2 molecule approaches a source of electron density, such as an alkene pi bond. The electrons in the sigma bond of the Br2 molecule are repelled toward one end of the molecule, so the bond becomes polarized. One end of the Br2 molecule becomes an electrophile in a sense, meaning it's low in electron density because its electrons are hanging out on the other end of the molecule. Our bromine molecule can now behave like an electrophile, just like the proton did in the first reaction we looked at. Check out what happens when cyclopentene and bromine, Br2, get close together. Cyclopentene has a double bond, of course, and as the bromine comes close to all these electrons in the double bond, the electrons on the end of the Br2 molecule closest to the double bond will be repelled toward the other end of the bromine, causing the bromine molecule to be polarized. The positively charged end of the bromine molecule will be strongly attracted to the electrons in the double bond on the cyclopentene. Notice that we show polarity along the sigma bond in the Br2 molecule with a delta plus at the positively charged end of the molecule and a delta minus at the negatively charged end of the molecule. Due to the polarity that's been induced on the bromine molecule, the first bromine on the bromine complex is a little low on electrons, so it forms a covalent bond to the first carbon. The second bromine, realizing it now has eight valence electrons and a negative charge, decides to get lost but it doesn't go too far. Carbon-2 over here is now lacking two electrons and is like a carbocation. The bromide anion still floating around out there 
decides to move in on the electrophilic carbocation and form a covalent bond with carbon-2. So this is all well and good if we're drawing these molecules on paper. But what do they look like in space? The fact is, if we could see 1,2-dibromocyclopentane floating around, it would always be found as a trans isomer, meaning the bromines would be on opposite sides of the plane of the cyclopentane ring. You probably remember that the word trans means that the two substituents, the two bromines, are on opposite sides of the cyclopentane ring. They are across from each other. And you probably also remember that cis means that the two bromines are on the same side of the cyclopentane ring. When two atoms add to opposite faces of the pi bond, they are trans to each other and they have undergone anti-addition. Conversely, if the additions are on the same face of the pi bond so that they are cis to one another, we say that they have added with sin addition. Okay, so why does this happen? Why is 1,2-dibromocyclopentane always found in the trans form of the isomer? Basic statistics tell us that when the second bromide bonds to the carbocation, there should be at least half as many cis forms of the isomer as trans. But the cis isomer doesn't form in this reaction with Br2. Why not? It's stubborn. The whole truth is, the cis form of the isomer never forms because the intermediate in the reaction is not a carbocation after all. And the reaction pathway is not exactly the same as it was for the one we looked at between HBr and 2-methylpropene. The intermediate in our halogen addition reaction is actually a bromonium ion. Before you freak out, we'll explain. A bromonium ion consists of a positively charged bromine atom bonded to two carbons, and it forms like this. Electron-deficient bromine latches on to carbon-1. It not only forms a covalent bond to carbon-1, but also to carbon-2. It forms this sort of triangular-shaped complex, which is sticking out from the molecule on one side of the cyclopentane ring. So, the positive charge ends up mainly on the bromine atom, but it's also shared by the other two carbon atoms. We call this positively charged triangular-shaped bromine cation a bromonium... Reaction number four, formation of a halohydrin. Alkene addition reaction number four, a halohydrin formation reaction. This is a variation of the hydration and halogen addition reactions we just looked at, reactions two and three. In this reaction, a halohydrin is formed. A halohydrin is a 1,2 disubstituted halo-alcohol. And that means... Well, 1,2 disubstituted simply means there are two substituents on neighboring carbons. In this case, one substituent is on carbon-1 of what used to be the double bond, and the other substituent is on carbon-2. Easy enough, right? And the term halo-alcohol tells us exactly what those two substituents are. It does? Yep. The term halo-alcohol tells us that one of the two substituents is a halogen, X, and that the other substituent is an OH group. So basically, all a 1,2-disubstituted halo-alcohol is, is a molecule with a halogen on one carbon and a hydroxyl group on an adjacent carbon.